Okay, the reading today is taken from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you, if you hold firmly to the word I preach you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to Kephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles and last of all, he appeared to me as to one who abnormally born. For I am least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God, because by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God, that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what I preach, and this is what you believed. This is the gospel of Christ. As we uh, as we reflect on God's word, let's pray together. So Jesus, uh, we think as we think about this Bible reading that we've just heard. Uh, we ask that you'd speak to us now and help us to understand it, under, help us to understand what makes your resurrection such good news for us and for the whole world. Amen. So, I want you to help me for a moment. I want you to imagine that you're sat quietly at home one evening, and all of a sudden you hear someone running through the streets screaming, and you look out the window, and... The, the woman who's screaming, she has a, a wild, excited look on her face and she's skipping down the road and she's shouting out, Good news! Good news! You'll never believe it! Now, I want you to imagine what on earth could she be talking about? What, good new, what could her good news be? What might make her so happy, so excited? So let's, uh, let, let's have a think together about some of the things that might make us happy and excited if like that. So uh, for instance, there's a Cadbury's lorry that's broken down and the driver says that unfortunately, because it's all going to melt, we're going to have to eat it for him. Come on. Can you think of anything? A lint truck, okay, you got higher taste, better taste than I have. Yep. An ice cream truck is broken down, and it need, they need to give everyone free ice cream. Brilliant. What else might be really good news that you can imagine someone running through the streets screaming and shouted? Lee staying in the Premier League. Lee, <laughs> Lee staying in the Premier League, absolutely. Seem equally miraculous. Uh, Anyone else? How about uh, they're giving away free Lego in the city, in the town centre? Yeah, does that sound good? How about uh, and there's a scientist in Oxford who's just discovered the cure for cancer? Yeah, that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Anything else? How do you top that one? Yeah, what, what do you think? We're... Everything is free. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be amazing? I, you know what? I would just take our energy bills being free. Wouldn't you? Well, all of these things could be good news. But in the Bible, really, that we've just heard, that Mark just read for us, Paul reminds the Christians who are living in Corinth 
that the best news in all the world, far better than free Lego or a lint truck breaking down or uh, even a cure for cancer or Leeds staying in the Premier League, the best news is what happened that first Easter weekend. Jesus died, Jesus was buried, Jesus rose from the dead. In fact, it's so important. Let's try and remember it by saying it together. So repeat it after me. Jesus died. Jesus, died. Jesus, was, buried. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose from the dead. Brilliant. Let's try it all together. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose from the dead. And this, this is the gospel in miniature. And gospel just, it's just an old English word that means good news. So this is the good news that Paul spent his life telling people. It was the good news that the church in Corinth had come to believe. And it was the good news that Paul wanted the Christians there to live out in their everyday lives. In, in verse 3, Paul says, what I, uh, what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. In other words, what I wanted you to know and to believe was exactly what I myself had come to know and believe was the most important thing in the world. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose from the dead. And St. Augustine, who was a teacher in the early church, uh, said that Christians are Easter people. And what he meant is that what happened at Easter is the most important thing about us. The good news that Jesus died and was buried and rose from the dead is what makes Christians tick. If you take that away, there's nothing worth having left over. And so the question is, why is what happened at Easter the most important thing in the world? Why does believing that Jesus died, was buried and rose from the dead matter so much? So first, why is it good news that Jesus died. Well, Paul tells us, Jesus died for our sins. When God made us, he made us to enjoy life with him forever. But he made us uh, to be like mirrors, reflecting who he is to the world around us. But each of us has turned away from God, we've rejected uh, his love, and we've tried to live uh, our lives without him. And so we've also failed to show other people what God's like. But when Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday, he paid the price that our sin deserves. He took all those bad things and all the sad things that they cause onto himself. Jesus took our place, feeling that awful pain of separation from God so that we don't have to. Because Jesus is alive, we know that God accepted Jesus' sacrifice and we're forgiven. So second, why is it good news that Jesus was buried? It seems a little bit strange, doesn't it, that Paul would say that? Well, when we bury someone, it's like sets the seal on the fact of death. It's like the final part of a life, isn't it? It's the final thing that says that that person has died, that they aren't with us anymore. Say, so for instance, Muslims believe that, that Jesus was a prophet but not that he was God's son and who died on the cross. So some people also find it so hard to believe that Jesus rose from the dead that they suggest, well, perhaps Jesus wasn't fully dead when he went into, uh, into the tomb. Uh, I find that harder to believe myself, given how uh, expert the Romans were at uh, crucifying people. But we don't bury people who are still alive. Uh, so to say that Jesus was buried means that he really did die. And that matters because Jesus can only defeat death if he himself died. If he didn't die, he might have cheated death, but he didn't defeat it. But if Jesus didn't die, then death still is the final full stop at the end of life. Third, why is it good news that Jesus rose from the dead? Because it proves once and for all that Jesus is who he said he is. You know, some people uh, say that Jesus was just a great moral teacher who said some wonderful things, had some wonderful teachings. And they might say things like, well, I really like this part of Christian belief, 
but I really struggled to accept that part. But Jesus claimed to be the Son of God and the true King of the whole world. So if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, he wasn't a great moral teacher at all. He was a liar. Tim Keller puts it brilliantly. He says, if Jesus rose from the dead, then you have to accept all he said. If he didn't rise from the dead, then why worry about any of what he said? So the fact is this, if, if Jesus really did rise from the dead, then that proves that he is the Messiah. He's the savior of the world. If Jesus really did rise from the dead, then he must be the king of the entire universe. If Jesus really did rise from the dead, then he really is God's son, God in the flesh. If Jesus rose from the dead, then it means he must be the most important person in history. If the same Jesus who died on the cross on Good Friday is now alive and reigns with God as king of the whole world, then there can be nothing more important than knowing him, loving him, and being part of his life-giving, death-defeating kingdom of heaven on earth. So the stakes couldn't be higher. The question then is, can we believe it? How can we know if Jesus really did rise from the dead? And Paul says, first of all, we can believe it because it's the storyline that runs through the whole Bible. Did you hear the, the couple of things that Paul says? According to the scriptures, Jesus died. According to the scriptures, Jesus was raised. According to the scriptures. A second, Paul says that we can believe it because there were eyewitnesses. Over 500 of them most of whom were still alive when Paul wrote the letter for himself. So what Paul's effectively saying is, do you find it hard to believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Most people would. Go ask them for yourself. Go ask them. If, you went to a, if there was a court case and there were 500 witnesses saying the same thing, what do you think would happen? The court, would, the court would find in favor of them. So what we believe about the world makes a huge difference to the way in which we go about our lives. Our beliefs, the things that we think are true about the world, are a bit like maps, going back to those treasure maps that we had at the beginning. Just as we use a map to help us find our way, so what we believe shapes how we act. And there are all kinds of maps uh, out there. But what we need is a map that matches with reality. So the problem with that first map that I gave you, I know it's a bit cruel, a bit of a, a trick, but the map didn't match what the church actually looks like. But the second map did match what the church looks like. And so, like I said, there are all different kinds of maps out there, and there are maps with directions like be true to yourself or speak your truth or don't let anyone else tell you what to do. But following the wrong map can lead us to taking all kinds of dead ends and wrong turns. But if you follow the right map, it can lead you to where the treasure is, where the good life is to be found. And Paul says that the good news of Easter is that treasure map. By this gospel you're saved, he says. Jesus died, Jesus was buried, Jesus rose from the dead. That's the treasure map. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? By which I mean, in the Apostle Paul's word, have you taken your stand on it? Have you staked your life on the crucified and risen Jesus, being the king of the world, being your king? For that, in Paul's mind, is what it means to believe, to be a Christian. So we don't believe something merely by, by saying we believe it, or even by believing that we believe it. We believe something when we act as if it's true. So let me leave us with a question. What would it mean for us to actually live as if it was true? To live as forgiven people who know that they're not loved because of anything that they do, but out of the sheer grace and goodness of God, who in Jesus would die for their sins. What would it mean to, to live in this fragile world as people who know that Jesus has won the victory over death? 
and that therefore death is no longer fatal to those who believe in him? What would it mean to live as citizens of heaven, people of heaven on earth, joyfully submitting our lives to the rule and reign of Jesus, King Jesus, the loving, kind, gentle King of the universe? Let me remind you then, once again, of the good news of Jesus. The good news by which we must all take our stand or else fall flat on our faces. The good news by which we're saved or else miss out on the life of the kingdom. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose from the dead. We are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. So let's sing it not only with our lips but with the whole of our lives. Amen. Amen. So we, uh, we're going to spend a, a little time now uh, just reflecting uh, together on, uh, on, on God's words. Uh, and we, in our all-in services like this, we do that in a number of ways. So there are a few different ways. So one is we're going to hear uh, a song. A song is going to be played. And you might just like to sit uh, and just listen to the words, listen to the song, and use that as a way of uh, helping you reflect on what, uh, what God's saying. The second is you might just like to turn, to turn to those around you, turn to the person next to you, and just think about in what way might living the resurrection change the way that you live this week. Uh, third, you, you might just like to reflect quietly, just what is God saying to me, and what am I going to do about it? Or fourth, you might like to make your own uh, treasure map as a way of reminding us of what Paul says. So this treasure map says, Jesus died Jesus was buried, Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus is our king. Now, I'm sure that you can do a far better treasure map than that, but that gives you an idea. So there are just a few different things. So we're going to um, uh, do, do, do whatever would help you most um, reflect and, uh, and think about God's word uh, as the music's playing. I like to do the maps just over here.